we're gonna talk about how to make a muzzle flash for a tank. Okay, you saw the video at the beginning. I don't really know if you can even call that a muzzle flash because it's really more like a swarm of fire. It is absolutely colossal, all right? So uh, we're gonna learn to use a little bit of physics simulation today, a little bit of fluid simulation. So uh, I understand that a lot of you guys probably never really got into that or just rarely did. And uh, I can, I am also the same. I never went too far into physics, but uh, that's why we're gonna keep it very simple today. We're not gonna go into some really complicated stuff. We're gonna keep it very beginner friendly for this physics simulation, all right? Now, if you guys like this tutorial, then we're gonna make another one next time. Where we're gonna talk about how to also make the smoke. Okay, this time we're only gonna make the flash, the fire flash, but of course we're gonna need some smoke as well. The reason I wanna keep those two separate is because it's gonna be quite long. It's gonna be quite a lot of information. We're gonna have to do two things separately. And uh, we're also probably gonna have to add some recoil later and stuff like that, which is gonna be a slightly different topic. So today I just want to make that big flash of fire and I want to show you guys how to do that, all right? So let's talk about it. We have our tank over here and this is probably going to work the same way for a cannon or something like that, you know, or a missile launch or something. But we have our tank over here and you would imagine that the projectile is being fired from over here. Okay, let's start by just creating a projectile over here, which we're going to launch out of this barrel, all right? So we have a barrel here, we have a hole inside the barrel and inside the barrel, we're going to add a cylinder and we're gonna use this cylinder to just kind of roughly shape out a projectile or a tank shell or something like that, all right? I don't know exactly what kind of shape these things have, but I imagine it's kind of like a bullet, all right? You extrude it out a little bit and then it gets a little bit pointier and rounder towards the top, okay? It doesn't really matter too much. The only reason we're making this for now is so that we have, we have an idea of when this is being launched so we can time everything and we can make things make a little bit more sense, okay? So you have this bullet inside the gun, and I know this bullet is actually fired from more like in here, okay? But uh, we're just going to leave it over here to keep things simple, okay? You can start it from over here if you want to, it doesn't really matter. And uh, so this projectile is inside the tank, and we're going to wait a little bit, and we're going to wait until like frame 10. And then on frame 10, we're gonna keyframe this and we're gonna launch uh, this projectile, okay? So on our timeline, we're gonna go to frame 10 and we're gonna press I and we're gonna keyframe the location, okay? And then we're gonna move it about, let's say three frames later to frame 13. And we're gonna move this projectile along the Y axis somewhere out here, okay? Now it doesn't really matter, we just wanna make it snap pretty quickly from here to there, okay? So we're also gonna keyframe that now, now that we're on frame 13 and this projectile is moved, we're gonna press I one more time, and we're gonna keyframe the location again. And now you see if we play our animation, the bullet travels from point A to point B in three frames. Now the problem is we have some frame interpolation here, okay, if I show you this in slow motion, it kind of accelerates, gets up to speed, and then it slows down, okay? We don't want that to happen, you can see that, that's not realistic, we wanna keep it more constant, okay? We wanna have the same speed the whole time. So we're gonna select both of these keyframes with A, and we're gonna press the T button, okay? And we're gonna set the interpolation to linear. And now it's gonna have the same constant speed the whole time as it's moving, all right? So now we know frame 10 is when our projector, a projectile is first launched, okay? And now let's add some physics simulations. We're gonna add the flames now, all right? So we're gonna go over here to the end of the gun. All right, we're gonna select something. We're gonna place our 3D cursor right there. And then we're gonna go ahead and add a plane there and we're gonna use this plane to kind of shape out the shape of the flame that we wanna have initially. Now, if you watch carefully in the video in the beginning, it's kinda of like there's a curved shape of the flame from the beginning, and then it just expands outwards towards the front, right? It kind of expands outwards and sweeps everything in its way. So we have to have a shape kind of like this one over here. It's kinda of like a upwards curve or something like that, okay? That's going to be the initial shape of our flame. And then we're gonna move it from there. So this object in our physics simulation is going to be the source of the flame. This this thing over here is gonna uh, emit and create flame. So we have our object over here, our source object. You can place it wherever you like. You can shape it to whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. But uh, we're gonna select this object, which is right in front of the gun here. Maybe we can bring it a little bit closer. Something like this. And we're gonna go ahead and press F3, which is gonna open up a little search menu. And in the search menu, we're gonna type in quick, quick, quick smoke, all right? And that's gonna give us all the setup that we need for our smoke simulation. Now that's very similar to fire sim uh, simulation, so we're gonna change it in a second, but you would probably use the same thing for a smoke simulation. And that gives you some basic setup over here. For example, when you added that 
quick uh, smoke simulation thing. It immediately creates this massive box in front of you over here and it changes you over to the physics properties tab which you have over here and some settings are added into this physics property tab. Now this box is called the domain and this is basically the binding box of our simulation. Okay, so all the uh, fluid that we create, all the flame or the smoke that we create, it's going to be kept inside this box. Okay, so if we have a massive explosion inside uh, from coming from this object, it's going to be limited by this box over here. It's going to be like an invisible wall so the flames cannot leave this box. And the reason that this exists is because Blender needs to know which part of the world we're trying to create the simulation. Uh, and it has to have some kind of limit, otherwise it can just go forever and everywhere which would probably make Blender crash. So you have this box here, which is currently a little bit too big for us, but we're gonna reshape this into a size that we think would be good enough to fit our uh, animation, to, to fit the simulation we wanna have just for the flame, okay? So we're gonna make it something like this. I'm gonna make it a little bit more narrow, as a matter of fact, okay? Something like this in front of the gun, and it's gonna go about three or four tank lengths to the front, all right? That's how we're gonna limit our simulation to. You can change it if you want, but I'm gonna keep it at this for now. And then we're gonna go ahead and select our object over here. And you can see the type here is set to flow, which means this object is responsible for the flow of a fluid. And uh, the flow behavior should definitely be set to inflow, okay? Make sure this is not geometry or outflow or anything. It's gonna be, you have to set it to inflow and you have to set the flow type to fire, okay? So this is just the basic pre-setup for creating a fluid like a fire or smoke. Now we're gonna use this fuel value over here later. This is going to control how much fuel and how much power there is to our fire. Okay, so we're gonna change that later, but for now we're just gonna leave it on one. Everything down here is okay in the flow source, but we are gonna check initial velocity. And the reason we're gonna check this is because when we uh, ignite this object over here, when it starts producing fire, we don't just want it to stay still and stay static. We want it to be pushed forwards, all right? Like you saw in the video, it has to go forwards very quickly. So we're gonna have to have some initial velocity to set that. Now in the initial velocity, we have the different axes, okay? We can set uh, the speed on which axis or the velocity on the, on the specific axis. Now we want it to go on the Y axis, but we have to make sure with the gizmos over here that we have the right direction. You can see the Y axis is over there. Okay, that's the positive value for the Y axis, but since we're pointing this way, we have to go in the negative direction on the Y axis. And in order to get that, we're gonna select this, we're gonna to go to initial velocity, and we're gonna set the initial velocity on the y-axis to something like a minus 50, okay? Because it has to go in the negative direction. That's why we use a minus. So minus 50 is gonna give us a good bit of speed. You might wanna change it if your model is a lot bigger or smaller, you're gonna need a higher or lower speed, right? Or higher or lower velocity. But 50 works for me here. And then we're gonna go back to our domain and we're gonna check some of the settings over here. Now, first of all, the resolution division, you can think of this basically as the subdivision surface modifier level of subdivisions, okay? The higher this number is, the more pixels we have in our simulation, the more precise, the more detailed and more realistic it's going to be. By default, it's 32, but I'm gonna set mine to 128. Obviously, if you want to go higher, it's gonna look a lot better, but it's also gonna take a lot more processing power. So I'm only using a university or an office laptop, right? So mine is not gonna handle too many uh, divisions very well. But if you got a powerful computer, you knock yourself out, crank it up to like 500 or something and see how that works for you, all right? The time scale, we're also probably gonna change that later, but for now, we're just gonna leave that on one. And then we're gonna scroll down to the cache menu. And here we have some settings for baking our animation, okay, or the simulation rather. Now you can see that the frame start is one and the frame end or and the end frame is 250, which means the simulation is gonna be baked for 250 frames. We don't need it to be that long because we have a very quick animation, right? Just a snap, or just a one quick impulse, and that's it. That's all the muzzle flash is. So we, we want this to be a lot shorter. Now we launched on frame 10, and we let's say we want this to end on like frame 25, just to make things quick and easy for us, okay? So we're gonna change that in our timeline, and we're gonna set the same figure in the cache over here in the physics properties. So we're just gonna set both to like 25 or something like that. And now if we play our animation, if we go back to frame zero and we play the animation, you're gonna see there is some flame produced by this object, kind of like we want it to, uh, to look, right? Now the problem is that there is way too much flame, uh, as in it just keeps building and it just keeps coming out, which is nothing like a realistic muzzle flash because ours has to be a bit more instantaneous, let's say. It has to be very quick and just like a one quick flash and that's it. And so we're basically gonna have to stop this flow of fire at, at a certain point. Now here's how we're gonna do that, okay? We're gonna select this object which is which produces the fire initially. 
And in the physics properties tab, we're going to find this little setting over here, which is called use flow. And there's a little box over here that we can check. It's currently checked, which means this is currently producing fire. If there is a flow of fire, if we uncheck this, it's not going to produce any fire at all. And the reason that we have this box is because we can keyframe it and we can control when we want to produce fire and when we want to stop producing fire or the other way around, right? So initially, we don't want there to be any fire until the projectile is launched on frame 10, right? Remember that on frame 10, we launched our projectile. So we're going to uncheck this box, okay? And we're going to come over here to frame 10, where we're going to uh, we're going to set a keyframe for use flow. So click on check use flow, and then keyframe that on frame 10. And then we're going to have a keyframe over here, which says, okay, on frame 10, we are having a flow. Now, this is currently universal for all frames because we don't have any other frames. But that's why we're going to go back to frame nine. And on frame now nine, we're going to disable the flow. Okay, so we're going to go to frame nine, and we're going to uncheck this and we're going to keyframe that. And this is also going to set the same setting for all the keyframes before nine. So on frame nine, we don't have any flow yet. But then on frame 10, the flow turns on. Okay. And then from frame 10 and on, we have a flow of fire in the scene. And then after frame 10, we're going to have to leave the flow active for a frame or two because we want there to be fire produced. But then we're going to have to stop it again because we only need it to be produced for like a second or very quickly while the projectile is launched and while the flash exists, right? So we're going to go to like frame 12, let's say. And we're going to check flow and we're going to set another keyframe. So for these two frames, fire is being produced, all right? And then on frame 13, we want to stop it again. So we're going to uncheck the flow or the use flow box again, and we're going to keyframe that again. So now from frame 12 to 12 uh, to frame 13, the flow of fire is stopped. Okay, so we no longer produce any fire. And we can check what that looks like now by just zooming out a little bit, we're going to go to frame zero, and we're going to play the animation. And you can see that now it's only a short period of time that the flame is being produced. Now right now it's still very slow because blender is still processing the animation. So, but we're going to bake it in a second and we're going to make it a lot quicker. Now the other thing that we have to do before we bake anything is we have to increase the time scale. Okay, so right now, it's going to be moving pretty slowly. But we're going to increase that to something like three, just to make everything flow a lot faster and to make uh, to make uh, to make the flash a lot quicker. Okay. And we can also go ahead and add some more fuel to this. So we're going to select this object. Let's let's also increase the number of sub steps to something like 12. And we're going to set the fuel level to something like three, okay, we're just going to make this a lot more powerful, maybe we can go to like five. So this is just basically going to add fuel to the fire quite literally, right? So we're going to be able to produce a lot more flame with this. And now let's select our domain. And let's go down here to the cache again. And we're going to set the type which is currently on replay, we're going to set that to modular. And this is basically going to allow us to bake the data, okay. And before we bake it, we're going to check is resumable over here. And we're going to get this button up here now. So we're going to set our timeline to frame zero. And we're going to hit bake data. Okay. Now you're going to have to give blender a couple of seconds just to process this uh, and to bake everything and to turn it into an instantly replayable animation. Obviously, if you've got a faster computer, this is going to be done a lot quicker, but you're going to have to wait a couple of seconds either way. And once we do that, once that's finished, we're going to play the animation. And that's going to give us a real time preview of what this looks like, right? Now ours is a lot faster. It's very nice and looks very good. It looks exactly like we want it to look. But what I'm still going to do is I'm going to reduce the number of time that we have uh, uh, that we have our use flow turned on. So I'm going to select my emission object over here. I'm going to go to the time uh, timeline over here. And I'm going to select these two last frames. I'm going to bring them a little bit closer to the first two frames just so we have only one or two frames while the flame is being produced. So we have less time. Uh, uh, with the use flow active, which means it's going to be a lot quicker still. And once we do that, let's go back to our domain again, we're going to bake the data one more time. And we're going to see what happens this time. And when we play this animation, it looks absolutely phenomenal. So if you guys like how this looks, and you want to get to get to know a bit more about how to make the smoke here, how to make some recoil and stuff like that. Let me know in the comments below because we're also going to make some videos about that if you guys are interested. And I hope you guys learned something from this video. And of course, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, drop a like all that stuff and I'll see you guys in the next one.